Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In preparing the anterior bridge, we will be using two basic chair positions, the 7 o'clock position and the 11 o'clock position. The 7 o'clock position is in front of the patient, and this is useful for determining and cutting the labial extent of finishing lines and also determining the incisal edge and the amount of gold that will be displayed on the incisal edge. The second position is the 11 o'clock position. And that position is behind the patient and basically we will be viewing the preparation with a mirror. Now I would like to demonstrate the preparation of the pin ledge preparation on the Visidant model. In a clinical situation, we will be using a ground-in pin facing or a temporary partial as a guide to establishing the finishing line on the distal of the central incisor. In a laboratory exercise, the lateral incisor of the Visidant model will be used. We will scribe a line on the distal of the central incisor, and then the lateral incisor will be removed. A second line will be placed one millimeter to the lingual. This will place the finishing line out far enough so it can be cleansed with a toothbrush, but far enough to the lingual so it will not display an excessive amount of gold. The parameters of the preparation also can be outlined on the lingual surface. We will scribe a line just inside the mesial marginal ridge, establishing the mesial finishing line. This is also done in clinic situations where delicate preparations are going to be prepared. A bowl gauge can be used to scribe the incisal finishing line. This is a guide. It is set at three millimeters and rubbed with graphite, and then this is scribed across the incisal edge of the tooth. This will make a line where the tooth is three millimeters thick. This can be further darkened, and a cingulum ledge can be marked on the tooth. The cervical limits of the preparation also can be scribed at this time. It is wise to cut some of the ginger of the model away so that we have access to the finishing line. Now we're ready to start the preparation. An inverted cone diamond is used to make the initial cut through the enamel. This cut is deeper than the remaining lingual reduction on this preparation. A 170L carbide is used to prepare the incisal ledge. This is cut to a depth of one and a half millimeters. A light touch and high speed is used to scribe this ledge. The cingulum ledge is also cut to a depth of one and a half millimeters. A football shaped diamond is used to reduce the lingual surface, a depth of one millimeter. The shaped diamond nicely fits into the concavity of the lingual surfaces of anterior teeth. A long thin diamond is used to make the distal slice bringing the finishing line up to the second pencil mark that we have placed previously. This finish line is brought around the lingual surface into the notch that we made with the inverted cone diamond. It is very important to have very sharp, definite finishing lines on these preparations. The same diamond is used to round the line angle of the distal and lingual surface. The same instrument can be used to make the incisal bevel. 
The instrument is held at 45 degrees, and care must be taken not to display too much gold in this incisal area. The 170 carbide is placed back in the handpiece, and recesses are made where the pins are going to be drilled. One on the mesial incisal, and notice how it is tucked into that mesial corner, and one on the distal incisal. This makes room for gold around the pin and acts for resistance in the casting itself. Same thing is done on the cingulum. This is in the center in this particular situation. Sometimes it's offset slightly to the mesial or distal. The same carbide is used to refine and sharpen that mesial finishing line. A half round burr is used to make dimples in the lingual surface where the twist drill is going to be used. The twist drill is used as a surveying instrument and it is moved from mesial to distal and buccal to lingual until the proper line of draw has been established. Once this has been established then, we will drill the first pinhole to a depth of one millimeter. The one millimeter depth is a depth that can be corrected if we are not happy with the line of draw. If it were three millimeters, it would be very difficult to change the line of draw. Care must be taken not to stop the twist drill in the tooth or else it may jam. We place the impression pin in and look at this from different angles. And if we are happy with the line of draw, then we will deepen the pin to a depth of three millimeters, keeping the twist drill moving as we cut this. The depth is checked with a zero probe, and then the impression pin is placed back in its position. It is used then as a guide pin for the second pinhole. The second pin will be cut in a similar manner, first to a depth of one millimeter, and then to a depth of three millimeters. The guide pin is placed in its position, and this is checked. If we're happy with this, we will deepen this to a depth of three millimeters. The cingulum pin is cut in a similar manner, but to a depth of only two and a half millimeters. If we're happy with the alignment and the depth, the pins are removed and the preparation will be refined. A sand disc can be used to smooth the preparation. Sometimes stones and wheels will be used to remove roughnesses. All the line angles can be rounded at this time, taking care not to obliterate the finish lines. A number two round burr is used to bevel the orifice of the pin holes. This is important to give extra bulk of gold around the pins and to allow easier cementation. Here we see the finished preparation with the parameters and details outlined with pencil. If you have all the requirements, then we are ready to prepare the cuspid. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.